My name is Bree Nicely, and I'm the Tennessee Campaign Coordinator for a group called Appalachian Voices, and we're a member of the Rural Power Coalition. You're watching the first episode of what started out as a 90-minute webinar and has been transformed into a six-part mini-series to let folks like you know why rural electric cooperatives are integral in the fight for energy equity and clean energy. Throughout the series, we will talk about the Rural Power Coalition's legislative proposal to help retire electric cooperative fossil fuel assets and reinvest in things like solar, energy efficiency, workforce development, and other essential programs that rural communities need. We share background on how this bill could strengthen rural communities and how you can join this movement for rural power. Before we get into the details of the $100 billion proposal, we will start with the basics. In this first episode, you'll learn the history of electric co-ops and how they are uniquely positioned to improve quality of life in rural areas. The story of how rural electric co-ops formed in the U.S. is a pretty inspiring one. In the late 1880s, most cities in our country were electrified, but rural areas were not because it wasn't profitable for private companies to run electric line in these really rural, you know, low populated areas. And that resulted in local economies really being stunted and quality of life was inhibited as well because folks didn't have access to electricity. It was, you know, it was a lot harder to, to do things that way. But 50 years after cities were electrified, the, in the 1930s, like the New Deal era, the Rural Electrification Act funded the REA, which is the Rural Utility Service today. And that created funding to help establish electric co-ops. These REA funds came together as well as just an incredible drive and impetus from rural people themselves to establish electric co-ops to bring electricity to their communities. And within a period of five years, there were hundreds of energy democracies or electric co-ops across the U.S., and rural people themselves are the ones who put up the poles and strung the line. And it was this amazing energy transformation, you know, across the rural landscape in the U.S. So this is what electric co-ops look like today. As you can see, they cover a lot of land mass in the U.S. If you're not in a rural area served by an electric co-op, chances are you probably have a family member or a loved one who is. And there are, you know, 40 million people who are serviced by electric co-op and they purchase $40 billion worth of power from their cooperatives every year. And if you are a customer of an electric co-op, you're also a member owner, which is a really special relationship that's different than being a customer of a municipal utility or a customer of an IOU. You have an ownership stake in the electric co-op and therefore a right to you know, some democratic decision-making power at your co-op. If you're a member owner of an electric co-op, your co-op subscribes to or should be subscribing to a certain set of principles, which include democratic member control and concern for community, cooperation among cooperatives. You can see the list here. And these are principles that are shared by all kinds of different co-ops, not just electric co-ops. Unfortunately, you know, there's been sort of a falling away from these values that's happened over time. And there's now a really robust movement of folks who are not just in the Rural Power Coalition, but who are involved in all kinds of groups, including AEO and um, New Economy Coalition that are working to democratize their electric co-ops and bring transformative change. We hope you enjoyed webisode one of the six part series. The key takeaway from this session is that electric cooperatives were founded on a model that puts community before profit. And because of that model and federal investment, they were able to rapidly transform the energy landscape of the US. In order for rural communities to flourish today, we need a recommitment to co-op values and to investment in rural areas. Please stay tuned to social media and check your inboxes because we'll be sending more content your way along with action opportunities to advance rural power. Thank you. Mm -hmm.